Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, just a couple of things that I want to mention before I get into this week's video. The first is, and I said last week that I hadn't got up to date with comments both on YouTube and in the Facebook group, and the same applies this week. Uh, this past week, things just haven't gone according to plan and so I am still behind with all of those but I will get caught up as soon as I can so please bear with me thanks so much for all the comments that you do leave and thanks for all your participation in the Mixed Media Emporium group you know, love it all and I'll get caught up as soon as I can now, the second thing I want to mention just quickly is many of you will know that YouTube has introduced more adverts into videos. Now, I have my video set that there should only be one advert at the beginning or adverts at the beginning, and then there shouldn't be any adverts in the middle. And I put those settings in place as soon as YouTube had introduced this. Unfortunately, for some reason, after the video goes live, it is changing my settings. I don't understand why. I think I might need to contact YouTube about it. But for those of you that have sat through several adverts before I've actually realised that they are back in there, thank you for doing so. Uh, for anybody that feels it was an absolute pain, I'm really sorry. I'm going to try and check it more thoroughly each week. So after the video goes live, I will be watching it through, which I don't normally need to do. But you know, trying to get that sorted, so please bear with me on that as well. So, let's get into this week and a new month in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And the prompt for this month is, uh, what, what, what are we calling it? It's like Mixed Media, uh, Mixed Media Techniques. And the technique we're going to do this week is dendritic, so dendritic art. So I've got some plain copy paper here and I'm going to do one or two experiments. So I'm not going to get right into the project that I'm doing, but here I am and I'm going to start with acrylic blocks and I'm going to use some different types of paints, but I am going to put this on double speed now because, you know, as I always say, I work quite slow and, you know, I try to get quite a bit into the, the video here today, a number of experiments. So with the blocks, each side has some markings on it, you know, obviously for lining up stamps and that type of thing. So I'm going to try and use the smooth side each time and lay the top one onto the bottom one. I will use a type of glass that you get, well, normally we'd get the best effects with glass. Uh, so you could use glass from say a frame or something like that but I don't have that so I'm just trying two or three different things so let's get started. Okay so got my two sheets of uh, acrylic stamping blocks and I'm going to use this spa blue from Deco Art. It's a crafter's acrylic and I'm going to use the same paints for all my experiments just to, to do some different tests. So I'm just going to put some of this out on the block once I can actually get it out. And I'm just taking a paintbrush and I'm just going to smooth that out. I want to get the paint as even as possible. Otherwise it will create different effects and might just kind of splodge a bit for want of a better better words. So I'm just taking the excess paint off my brush and I'm just going to put it on that piece at the side. So I'm laying my other piece down on top. Now one of the other things you could use for this is say uh, Perspex if you had something like that, any types of kind of plastic. I'm showing you there that there's a little bit of the uh, pattern starting. Now one way to lift it would be to use a kind of palette knife like that. Now as I lifted it, it moved. So the pattern didn't really spread much further. But as I say, what I'm trying to do here is to try it with different paints to see how best it works. So I'm just looking to take that little bit off. When you take it off, you just want to tap it gently with paper. It's not like with a gel plate where you might want to lean quite heavily. So I'm just putting some more paint on the top there 
just making another layer of it, trying to smooth it out and we'll see what happens this time. So again, putting my block down and I'm going to push on it. I'm pushing on it quite heavily. I stand up to do this now because I want to try and force those patterns. And again, I can see a tiny bit starting, but it's mainly round the edge. So I'm just going to take a piece of my paper and try and just capture that as best I can. Just tapping lightly all over it, just trying to lift that pattern off. And there we go. It's not bad. Some little bits of pattern, some bits of lines in it. And you can see there's still that bit of pattern there. So I think I'd, I do take another piece of paper and just lift that, although not much came up. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down that I used an acrylic block. I'm going to write down the paint that I used just as a reminder to myself. There we go. So no, it didn't lift terribly well that second time. I didn't really get a second print from it. This time, Crafters Acrylic and this is Blue Neon. Now, I know from the past that when I've worked with the kind of neon paints on the gel plate, it has left some kind of dendritic patterns just by going over it with the roller. So I kind of thought this might work quite well. I don't know if it's just a different... A binder or ingredient of some kind that's in uh, this sort of paint but as I say I found in the past that it does leave quite good patterns so again I'm going to press right down and into that and you can see down at the bottom there and on that left hand side it started to make those patterns quite quickly so pushing really heavily there trying to get it to spread doesn't quite go all over it though but you know it's not bad so again I'm just going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to lift this now we'll do a very short project at the end of this today but mainly uh, what I was trying to do today was just to experiment now what I'm doing in between times is I'm cleaning those blocks off quite a bit. I'm trying to, there, there's a nice bit of pattern left on the top block as well, so of course I'm going to try and grab that. Don't want to waste anything. But in between times I'm cleaning my blocks off and making sure that they're dry before I start the next layer. And that wasn't too bad at all, I quite liked that one. I think that paint certainly gave a better effect than the first one, the plain Crafters acry Acrylic. But I decided that maybe I didn't give that first one a very good chance, so I'm just going to try it again. Perhaps I hadn't leaned on it quite heavy enough, so, you know, not going to write it off at this stage. Just trying to get the excess paint off these brushes. They seem to hold a lot of paint, so... I don't want to waste any of it. So again, really pressing heavy on this. Moving my entire table. Can see it starting a little bit. And I'm standing up to put as much pressure on that as possible. And I'm thinking, that's an interesting pattern. How did I get that? But I then realised that, in fact, I'd used the other side of the acrylic block. So the bit that's got the markings on it. So... I guess the thing is it gave quite a nice pattern anyway. So none of this will be wasted. All these pages will be used for collage of some description or they'll go into a little journal of some description. So nothing will be wasted. And of course all the excess paint is just going onto that painted page at the side there. So I'm now taking this crimson red from Arteza. This is a, a thicker paint. So at this point, not sure if I'll get different results or not. But it's all about just trying different paints with the acrylic blocks. But even as I'm laying this down, it, it has a different feel to it compared to the Crafters acrylic, which was definitely a thinner paint. So I put this down and again I do the pressing and I'm thinking mm, I'm not really seeing anything there at all 
So I keep pressing and pressing and pressing and it's actually quite hard to pull these two apart. Now you will see there that there is actually a pattern on it. It's just, it's almost created in a slightly different way. So rather than the pattern kind of going through it, it's the kind of pressure from the two pieces and then pulling them apart that's creating a bit of the pattern. But it's still that kind of dendritic pattern and really quite like this one. And you can see with that one that I actually was able to lift a second print from it. And their Tesa paints are quite quick drying, so I think the fact that I got a good second print, you know, was, was slightly unexpected, but I was glad to get it. And of course I'm going to take it off the other block as well. And again, quite a nice print. I quite like it with the lines on it there as well as the, the kind of, I think it's fractals that they call them. So again, not wasting any paint, just doing that painty paper. And you'll see that's still lifted a bit from leaning on there. And I quite like that colour over that there. So, you know, doing it on top of the solid colour was quite nice. So I'm now taking this Arteza Gold Acrylic. So this is from my set of, I can't remember, 12 or 14 paints, but it's the same as the ones that's in the, the metallic paint sets. So using the metallic gold, and again, just spreading it out, putting my top block on, pressing hard. And what you need to be careful of is not to slide one along the other. Seeing a little bit there, so I'm kind of hopeful. And this is well stuck together. I'm really having to pull it. You see, going in with my palette knife, trying to get an edge under. I'm quite pleased with that. It did slip ever so slightly when I was trying to lift it. But I've got something that will make quite a nice print there. So again, just going over, gently over that, and you can see that's lifted quite nicely. And again, I'm going to lift what's still there. And another second print that's quite nice. And now just doing the same on the top piece. So really, really liking the way it's kind of those little kind of branches, little tendril type things coming out there and making lovely patterns. So I now have two glass kitchen mats. Uh, they're both kind of textured on one side, so I'm using the smooth side in each case. And I'm just going to use those same paints again just to see what the effect is this time. So I've got my bigger board on the bottom and the smaller board on the top. And I've left that little bit hanging over just to be able to lift it. And you'll see pressing really hard there. You can see some of the pattern coming. My entire desk is moving at this point. But I'm keen to try and get this. And there we go. So again, I moved it a little bit. Uh, the glass, the top glass plate slid along the bottom one, so I won't get as neat a pattern, but it's okay, it's there. I've got something from it, so quite happy with it. And, you know, as I say, this is just about experimenting. So I decided to try it again because of the fact that the plates had slipped. Trying to get a nice even layer, pushing that down again. Now I may have said this already, if you were using glass from a frame you would need to be careful uh, because it could, putting this amount of pressure on it, could actually break glass. So I think I got a little bit of a better print that time. 
and quite liking the way that that turned out. And the top one especially. So now taking the neon blue again and this time trying it on the glass mat. And because it's glass there is a bit of a reflection from above. So you can see my camera up there. So again spreading it out, putting it down. You can see a bit of it coming there. Actually pushing with my thumbs in places to see if I can get it to do it. And a little bit of interesting pattern. I'm not really at any point getting it to travel the whole distance of the paint. So back to the Arteza Crimson Red. And again, an even layer. I'm just keeping them quite small. I mean, obviously I could have covered a larger area, but I just wanted to keep it reasonably small since it was just experimenting. So pushing hard, not seeing the pattern terribly much other than those kind of lines. Get my paper ready. Go to lift it. And again, you can see it when you look more closely. A, right lob, a, 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 a light rub over, or a rub light over. And just doing a second and getting that one as well. Trying for a third, but getting tiny bits, but not much more than that. And there we go, some nice little bits there. I didn't do it today because, you know, I, I could have experimented with this all day, but obviously that would make a very long video. But I think it would be good to do this on something like a deli paper, something of that sort where it's transparent and then using it then as a collage. But I'm back to my gold metallic. Again, brushing it out, again using the glass, pushing down hard. And this was really difficult to lift. It stuck well and I got a really nice pattern that time. Not the type that you saw growing underneath or between the glass, but definitely there and a very nice effect from it. And in many instances with this, I'm, I'm liking the second lifting of it more than the first. It's not that I'm not liking the first, it's just the second. We get more of the actual uh, dendritic effect, I think. And I just want to capture as much as possible there. And really liking that. And I will do a run through of all these pages towards the end. Love the way the pattern's left on there, but that will need to get wiped off. So I decided that I would try my gel plates, just a kind of quick try at these. Now these had not been cleaned previously, I'm not going to clean them, but I'm just going to try the little plate on top of the, the bigger plate. I'm not sure what effect I'll get by pushing the two together. 
but my intention here was to use the exact same paints again, but I do change partway through this. So I've got the Crafters Acrylic in the Spa Blue, spreading it out. A couple of little bits suddenly appeared in that. Some of these paints are quite old. And I'm going to push this down, pushing the smaller plate on top of the other. And of course, because they're, they're gel plates, I'm not quite sure the two being pressed together what result I'll get. And certainly not the kind of dendritic effect as such. It just seemed to spread the paint a little bit and I got a few lines but not much more than that. So I decided I'll give it a go with the blue neon and I'm just doing that right on top of that so the two do mix in a little bit. But just going to try the same thing here. And this is something that I would like to experiment more with. But I've got a little bit more effect there. And I think that's, as I was saying earlier, the neon paints seem to have something in it that just lend themselves more to that. Just trying to pick it up from there as well. Now at this point I decide that this is not working too well so I'm going to try something different. So I'm going to put some of my red down on the gel plate. Again just try and get a nice thin even line or not trying to get it too thick but the same token don't want it too thin but this time I've put my acrylic block on it that I'm not pressing right in the corners of the block because I don't want them to go into my gel mat. Lifting that and I've got a little bit of marking but again not really what I was kind of hoping for. Taking it off of the block as well. But again, you know, it's all going to make good collage. So, and it is just simply about experimenting and seeing what's going to work best. I think I take a piece of paper here and just try to, to lift some of that. I'm also going to do it with the gold just to see how it turns out. Okay, so I've managed to lift a little bit of the paint from there. And now just going to put some gold down and I'm going to do something similar again just with the acrylic block. So spreading this out. And putting my block on top. Again, not trying to press too heavy with this one because I really don't want the block to cut my mat. But interestingly, I've got a different sort of pattern, but I've definitely got a bit of the kind of dendritic effect there. Again, just trying to lift what's still there. And there's a little bit. And I just keep going, just trying to pick up every last drop of paint. So let's have a, a quick look at that. I would have really liked to have done more today, but it, it would have made it a very long video. Like that piece where it was one colour on top of the other. So here we go with the, the craft paint and the acrylic block. Didn't work too well. The neon paint worked a bit better with the acrylic blocks for me. The Arteza paint, which is thicker, had some nice dendritic patterns in it. And the Arteza acrylic metallic 
for me, worked really well and I think it turned out best of all. Here it is with the glass boards. That was not too bad and I could see a nice pattern in there, thinking of plants, so quite like that. This had, again, more effect and this has an actual raised feel to it. I could actually feel this more than I could with the other two. And the gold in particular was really raised. And, you know, what I got by using these thicker paints was a second print on each occasion. That didn't work well with the gel plate. Gel plate and acrylic block, you know, I've, I've got some paper that will do for collage, so I'm quite happy with that. But, you know, what my experiments told me was that those slightly heavier paints actually worked better and the metallic paint best of all. Now, it's a limited experiment. I would have liked to have tried it with more paints, you know, different brands, different weights, etc. But... Uh, could have spent hours doing it and I'd already been a while at this. It takes a while to clean the plates in between. Not, well, not that it takes a while to clean the plates, but doing them as many times it took a little while. So I'm now taking my Arteza Phalo Blue and I've got some ATC cards here, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. Just wanted to do a little project. Did that one in yellow ochre and the other one in phalo green, albeit the yellow ochre has picked up a bit of the green that was still on my paintbrush. I've decided that I want to use some metallic paints to try and get a bit of dendritic printing on each one. So with the phalo blue I'm going to use some silver and I'm going to use my acrylic blocks because I felt that I got the best results with my acrylic blocks albeit the glass mats were pretty close, but they seemed to almost create a real vacuum uh, when using these paints together that made them quite difficult to, to separate. So pressing down on that, and there we go, we have a nice bit of pattern there. Now this silver is also from my larger set of Arteza, but it's also available in the set of metallic paints and I'll leave a note of all the paints I've been using today in the description box below. So I'm just going to try and lift some of that up and see what we get. And I liked that and I immediately thought of an abstract trees against the moon. So these cards are all going to be abstracts but again, the cards themselves were just kind of experimenting and I did like that silver on that phalo blue background. So I'm now taking this pearl deep brown and I'm going to use that on the green. So again, this is one of the Arteza paints from the set of 36 that I got. And I'm going to press the two together, pressing hard. You can see a little bit of pattern starting there. And I like that. That quite looks like trees to me. So we're just going to take this and grab some of those dendritic trees onto my card. Just going to try and catch that on the other edge. And I'm quite liking that. And it definitely leaves a nice print just on the uh, plain printer paper there. So I've now got three colours. Sage green, cactus green and olive green. And I want to try and do a bit of a, a layered effect here. Now, my thought was I would put the lightest on first, kind of to the top of the card, then the kind of middle tone one and then the darkest. 
it doesn't quite work out the way I expected, but I think one of the reasons is when I put the card on, I laid it down too hard, so I kind of squished the pattern rather than uh, lifting it. So there I didn't have enough paint on, I'd spread it too thin, so just adding a little bit more. You know, and I'd encourage you, especially if you haven't done this type of effect before, just to spend a little bit of time experimenting. It's fun just experimenting. So pressing it really hard, I can see the pattern coming through. And yes, I've managed to get a little bit more this time. So I'm just going to take my card and try and grab some of that. But right away, I thought I've pressed a bit too hard there. So I've got some of it but I have squished it down. You really just need to do a kind of light touch. Oh, at that point there was a wasp came in, so it was kind of buzzing about me, so I had to jump out the way. There's that brush grabbing too much paint again, so I, I didn't this time really clean off in between. I thought it doesn't matter if the paints mix. Got quite a good pattern that time. And I'm just going to add that. And you see right away I put my hand right down on that. Didn't do it lightly. So again I've kind of squished it. But you know when I take my paper here, I do it a bit more gentle, a bit lighter touch. And it turns out pretty nicely on that. I think because the cards were thicker, it was a watercolour paper, ATC, and I think just because it was a bit thicker, for some reason I was pressing harder on it and just didn't quite grab the pattern as well. So my final colour. Here we go again, same technique every time. You can see that there. That really could actually see it spread there, which was the effect that you often see. And again, I'm just going to try and catch that. But I know at this point that I probably haven't got it anything terribly well. It, I didn't get the effect I was going for, but you know, that's okay. I will experiment with that more in future. Just decide to take that card and see if I can grab a little bit of that colour. And I managed to get a little bit, and that one's actually looking quite good because I was a bit more gentle with that one. So, picking up just what's left and moving those off. So, I've got my three cards now, my three ATCs, and I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of mark making line work. This is my Pentel white pen. Just making that kind of into a moon. So these are going to be trees in the moonlight, just putting a bit of ground in. Just a few little marks here and there just to give the sense of it perhaps being kind of tree trunks. I'm, I'm seeing all of these as, as, well this one anyway being trees and the green one being trees. But you know I don't want to adjust it too much so it is very much a kind of abstract. This one I decided to take just that biro pen that I was using earlier to write what I did with each experiment and the paint etc. I'm just kind of putting in some tree trunks here and I'm imagining these as being kind of little trees in amongst a bigger forest. So a few tree trunks, a bit of leafage in the background there and that's that one. But you can see how the dendritic pattern very much can give that kind of branch-like effect, making it look like trees. Now the last one. I kind of look at this a few times and think, what am I going to do with this? I can't see much in this at all. And I decide, well, I start to do a kind of leaf drawing and I guess it turns more into a kind of flower of some description with different petals, just using that biro pen again. 
I just wanted to make something from this. Didn't really matter how it turned out, but actually I quite like the way it turned out. So if you're in the mixed media emporium, we're looking at different kind of mixed media techniques. And this week we're doing dendretics. So certainly look forward to seeing what you create with whatever materials you've got. You know, I hope that I've, I've showed you that there's different ways to create this effect. So yeah, look forward to seeing what you do. Just doing a little bit of shading there and a little bit of line work with that pen just to finish that off. If you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium, then I will leave a link below to the group. And of course, Nina will have a video this week, so I'll leave a link to her video as well. So I really quite like that last one with the, the kind of flower and it was fun doing all the experimenting. So I'll leave some shots in at the end, some stills in at the end just for you to see. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care, look after yourself and hope to see you next time. Bye for now.